Mr. Beast has hit 40 million subscribers on YouTube. Given how fast he's grown in the past two years, many probably think of him as an overnight success. In this video, I'm going to share the principle of asymmetric outcomes through rare events as taught by Nassim Nicholas Taleb in Fold by Randomness and how Mr. Beast used this principle to succeed on YouTube. On February 20th, 2012, Jimmy Donaldson released his first video on YouTube. Even though he was only 14 years old, young Jimmy knew that he wanted to make it as a YouTuber. Like most YouTubers starting out, he had a tough time growing his channel. His first 59 videos were of him playing video games. On his 61st video, released September 8th, 2013, he notified his viewers that his channel had surpassed 50 thousand video views. It took him 567 days to reach 50,000 views, an average of only 88 views a day. I just hit 50,000 video views on YouTube in case you didn't piece that together, which is pretty awesome. That's like an epic milestone. I have 50,000 plus views on YouTube. On March 31st, 2014, Jimmy released a video titled Two Years of YouTube. And I've actually uploaded like over 300 videos to this channel, but a lot of my older videos sucked. I've been doing YouTube for about two years now, and I'm approaching a thousand subscribers. You're probably wondering to yourself, why did this kid keep making videos? To this point, he had made hundreds of videos and hadn't even reached 1,000 subscribers. Surely he was not meant to be a YouTuber. This leads me to one of my favorite authors, Nassim Nicholas Taleb. In his book, Fooled by Randomness, he talks about a concept that led to Jimmy having the success he had. In Nassim's words, asymmetric outcomes means that the payoffs are not equal. Over time, one side will gain more than the other. But you can pretty much tell how the random event would hit you, no? You know whether you're going to make from it, lose from it, make a lot, lose a lot, okay? So you try to position yourself in a way to benefit more than you would lose from a random event, okay? Or to lose less than your neighbor from a random event. That's, that's the idea of a symmetry. It's pretty much like an option, what I call an option. An option, you make more on the upside than you would on the downside. And if you, in, gen or, uh, in general, make more from a random event than you lose from it, then you're gonna do very well in the long run, provided you make sure you're gonna survive. To understand this point and how it applies to Mr. Beast, let me give you a quick example. I'm here in Las Vegas and I create a casino game on my own. There is a roulette wheel with 1,000 numbers on it. I will select just one number. If the wheel stops on any number besides the number I choose, I will hand you $1. If the wheel stops on my number, then you hand me $10,000. The probability of you winning one individual turn is 99.9%. .9%. The probability of me winning an individual turn is only 0.1%. The frequency or probability of the loss in and by itself is totally irrelevant. It needs to be judged in connection with the magnitude of the outcome. Even though I will have a lot of spins where I will pay you $1, my expected return is actually profitable for every spin because statistically I will hand $1 to you 999 times for a loss of $999, but on one of the 1,000 spins, you will hand me $10,000 resulting in an average of $9 profit on every spin. What was it, about nine months ago, I actually quit YouTube. Like I've been doing it for about two years, uh, I had a couple hundred videos, um, I had about a thousand subscribers, and uh, I just wasn't having fun. To think that Mr. Beast almost quit when he had 1,000 subscribers. Think of how different his life turned out because he made one decision to come back and try again. And then eight months ago, I read those comments and I decided I was going to start doing YouTube, but I decided this time I wasn't going to stop, I was going to upload daily, I was going to stay motivated, and uh... It worked out. It definitely did work out, Jimmy. What Jimmy understood deep down is that you have to keep taking swings even if you aren't reaching whatever level of success you're aspiring for. I think you can apply Nassim's teachings to any area of life, but it's specifically applicable to YouTube. When Jimmy first began creating videos, the odds of any single video going viral was statistically not going to happen. Let's say the odds were 1 in 1,000 like our previous example. With every video he created, he had a point. 1% chance of having a video get caught in the algorithm and going viral. But he knew that if he continued making videos and continued trying new video concepts that at some point his one number would get stopped on the roulette wheel and would qualify as his rare event. I applied this concept to my YouTube channel as well. For four and a half years I grew to only about 300 subscribers. 
then one video took off. The video I made detailing how I bought a fourplex in Las Vegas got swept up in the algorithm and reached about 100,000 views in 60 days. That video took off when I had less than 500 subscribers. That was my one video out of the thousand. The fourplex video was the 84th video of this channel. I had another channel years ago that received very few views, but I made probably 40 videos. So my rare event happened after making over 120 YouTube videos. Realistically, Jimmy didn't have one video where his channel blew up, but the concept still holds true. He spent years tinkering with his content trying to figure out what worked. He didn't have one video, but I believe he had a moment where he figured it out. On January 31st, 2016, Jimmy released a video titled Counting to 10,000 in One Sitting. Seven, eight, nine, ten. 1,442 days after starting his channel, Jimmy found the content idea that would change his trajectory. This was his 404th release video, but the first of its kind. It has now been viewed over 11 million times. Now understanding what Mr. Beast has become, it's easy to see why this video has done well. It's a Mr. Beast trademark, a ridiculous title, a ridiculous video, and only a madman dedicated to doing something insane for a YouTube video could pull it off. Around this time is when his channel began taking off. This video certainly was not the only reason, but it has outperformed all of the other videos released around the same time. On June 11th, 2016, 1,574 days into his YouTube career, in his 448th release video, Mr. Beast surpassed 50,000 subscribers. Only 26 days later, Mr. Beast was able to surpass 100,000 subscribers. It took him 450 videos in order to reach that plateau. Mr. Beast didn't have one video where he went from 1,000 subscribers to 1 million subscribers, but his moment happened around this time. He had a month or two where everything clicked in place, and he began making the content that would ascend his channel into superstardom. On January 8th, 2017, 1,785 days after he began and on his 487th video, Jimmy counted to 100,000 in one video. I remember seeing the title and thinking, there's no way someone did that. This is a table. I'm gonna take these plastic knives. I'm gonna cut right here. I'm gonna cut all the way through it. All of those years spent trying to figure out what content to make and tinkering with his ideas, Jimmy now found his golden ticket. His content is doing outrageous stunts using crazy large numbers that are so outrageous that you have to click to see if he went through with the plan and of course donated in all of the money he was making. Over the next few months, he made the following videos. Reading the YouTube Terms of Service, reading the entire dictionary in one sitting, counting to 200,000, dropping 10,000 pennies in public prank, watching Dance Till You're Dead for 10 hours, reading the longest English word, spinning a fidget spinner for 24 hours straight, counting to 300,000, giving homeless people $1,000, watching It's Every Day Bro for 10 hours, giving a random homeless man $10,000, saying Logan Paul 100,000 and giving my mom $100,000. When Jimmy first began making videos, he was receiving under 100 views per day. Now he's consistently receiving tens of millions of views per video. He was then able to rip off one of the best 24 month stretches in YouTube history, gaining 98% of his 40 million subscribers along the way. What I want you to take away from this video is this simple concept. You need to be willing to take small L's for years if you're trying to build a YouTube channel. You'll need money for equipment and editing software. You'll spend hours making a video. You may spend another few hours editing and uploading, making the thumbnail. You may do this for years. Each video you make that doesn't help your channel grow or go viral is one utility of loss. But if you have one video or if you have one month where everything clicks, then the positive gain from this experience will far outweigh any losses you incurred throughout the process. The upside is endless and is exponentially greater than the single utility of loss from the previous videos. I made videos for five years and didn't earn a penny, didn't build a following, and many times felt like YouTube wasn't for me, but now I'm consistently adding 250 subscribers per day and making over $6,000 per month in ad revenue alone. The growth curve is exponential, so this is just the start. Like Jimmy, I may have taken small losses for five years, but when that rare event happened, the positive gain was exponentially more than the net amount of losses I incurred since 2015. By an old trader who came and told me, listen, take all the risks you can, but make sure you're hidden tomorrow. So make sure you survive. So it tells you that you got to gear your risk taking first towards survival 
And that entails you take more risk as you're making more money with the casino money. And that's called mental accounting is deemed irrational. And being paranoid is deemed irrational because they only look at a single event, not series of events. Go out and take risks with your content. Take risks by spending time making videos. Thankfully with YouTube and unlike running a real business, there is no risk of ruin so you will always be able to show up the next day. When you analyze a single video, the probability of it going viral is incredibly small. But when you do this for years, you have to analyze the aggregate. All you need is your one in 1000. The upside of your rare event is too great to pass up. As long as there's at least a small chance of winning, I'm playing ball. I hope you are too. Thanks so much for watching.